I want to ask you about inflation because you you made it very clear today. Yes, there's going to be inflation pressures, uh, but don't make too much of year-over-year -year numbers. It's it's going to go up to about two percent and probably stay somewhere around there. But uh, a lot of people. Let's take it a big investor like Leon Cooperman. He was on Bloomberg Television. It's going to going to be so high. It's going to force the Fed to hike rates in 2022. Janet Yellen, former Fed chair, now Treasury secretary, uh, said that with the the massive stimulus in place now and you know giving the economy more of a push that rates might have to rise a little bit in order to make sure the economy doesn't overheat she walked back the remarks later and said oh i'm not telling the fed what to do but that's what she said so clearly that's what she sees uh with so many things saying hey inflation's going to go up uh how can you be so sure that it's going to be temporary well we can never be sure but i would say if you look at private sector forecasts uh, use the blue chip forecast in the talk that I gave today. I have a chart that shows what individual forecasters are expecting for inflation this year and next year. And the average of those forecasters are 2.3% for this year and 2% for next year. So why do they have inflation somewhat higher this year and somewhat lower next year? It's because they're likely to be temporary effects that are going to cause inflation to be higher this year. One of those effects is at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, prices were dropped quite substantially as firms tried to clear their inventory before the economy shut down. And those observations are dropping out, which is going to cause a, a year over year uh, look at inflation to uh, look a little bit larger. Second, we definitely have had some supply shocks. Uh, you're seeing it in very low inventory levels. Uh, it's hard for many retailers to restock their shelves. You're seeing it in backup supports. You're seeing it in shipping costs. But um, all those things are likely to mitigate over time. Uh, so I think there are going to be significant pressures in the near term uh, that are more related to supply problems. And I would highlight, because a lot of people have deferred consumption over the last mm -hmm. year, think about airlines, think about restaurants, think about hotels that many people are anxious to start spending again and spending in a way that they don't have to be socially distanced. So there's likely to be a surge in demand at the same time that there are going to continue okay. to be supply constraints. And that's going to push up inflation for this year, but we're not expecting that to persist into next year. And so the Fed has a forecast that's very similar right. to most private sector right. forecasts. Well, but, but even so, uh, you know, the Fed, 2015, 2018, you know, part of the new framework is based on the fact that Fed feels, gee, we thought inflation was going to go up when, when unemployment got really low, and it didn't. So now we've changed the paradigm. We're going to let inflate the economy run hot, and we're going to let inflation rise because we know it's so hard. We don't even think for sure that it's going to go much further. But um, are you are you kind of using the, are you the victims of the old paradigm? Is it possible that this is a very different recovery. You're coming out from a strong economy, big dip because uh, of the pandemic. Now you've got, you know, almost $6 trillion worth of stimulus already at your back. Isn't it possible that you're going to miss the fact that paradigm has changed again? This is a new paradigm and inflation pressures are going to build and they could get out of hand if the Fed isn't a little more ready to, to even take tiny steps to address it. Well, I think we're ready if there is clear evidence that inflation expectations or the underlying inflation process has gone up. But I don't think we should overreact to temporary measured inflation measures. So um, it's going to be easy to write headlines over the next couple of months, uh, particularly if the time period that you picked or the way you annualize the data uh, kind of highlights some of the supply shocks that we've seen. But we've just gotten, you know, from uh, most of the period from 2000, the surprises have all been on one side. It's that inflation has been lower. So I think if you use any kind of statistical modeling, uh, it's going to be very hard to see a lot of sensitivity of wages and prices to tight labor markets. Now, you're right that the pandemic may have changed some of the behaviors of individuals and firms. And we're going to have to be looking very carefully at the data to make sure that's not occurring. But I think the weight of the evidence has to be that we actually have data that shows that underlying mm -hmm. behavioral assumptions have changed enough that we should be more concerned that the underlying okay. inflation rate is going to be higher. What about
about the size of the stimulus itself, though, President Rosengren. A, a couple days ago, I, w I did an interview with uh, Raghuram Rajan. He's a central banker like you, as you know, former head of the Reserve Bank of India. He, um, um, you know, you know him well in these central banking circles. And um, he said that he thinks the Fed's being overtaken by events, um, saying we're going to remain accommodative. All this stimulus is coming. And the Fed is, is probably going to force, because it's going to boost the economy, to rethink what it's doing. And the Fed may have to move sooner, including on tapering than it thinks, which is some, than something that could give the, the, bond, the bond market kind of an, a bit of an unpleasant surprise. I guess I really want to focus on the stimulus part of this and just the possibility that it's, it's different again and that that's something that the, you don't really, the Fed doesn't really seem to have that so much on its radar screen. We should remember that there's still a lot of slack in labor markets. So the unemployment rate currently is at 6%. The labor force participation rate is roughly 2% below what it was prior to the pandemic. Um, so there is a lot of room for labor markets to tighten up. And the pandemic was a severe shock. So we need to have a, a very strong economy to get people reemployed quickly. So one of the ways you do that is uh, to continue to have stimulus with monetary policy. Okay. But the other way is to have a fiscal package. And I agree that the fiscal package is much larger than what we traditionally have seen coming mm -hmm. out of a recession. But I think it's also reflecting the fact that we've had a very severe shock right. that disproportionately affected the low income uh, workers and that if we don't have a strong economy, they may stay okay. unemployed for a much longer period of time. I just want to ask you one more question here, sir. Uh, you just mentioned the labor market slap. Uh, all of a sudden, we're hearing about labor market slap. I thought the Phillips curve was discredited, that there isn't a, there's a, a very weak link now between labor market slack and unemployment and what happens with inflation. If it's discredited, why is the Fed suddenly calling on labor market slack to say, oh, we don't have to worry about inflation? Because most people that are arguing for more inflation have to argue that wages and prices are going to start being much more sensitive to tight labor markets. And that's not in the data right now. It may be in the data going forward that we're going to look very carefully at the data to see if that is the case. But I think the burden of proof is really on individuals to say it's in the data. And at least to date, it would be a very hard case to make.